1 million views. Imagine 1 million people listening to what you have to say. Jeez, I can't even present in front of my high school class. What the fuck? So lately I've been seeing a trend where people talk about how much money they made on their video that made a million views. And get ready for the subtle flex, but um, I have a few videos with a few million views. Sorry, yeah. I know, I miss shit. <laughs> yeah. All jokes aside, I've just seen a lot of people glamorize the process of getting a million views. A lot of people think I'm millionaires. I literally Googled my net worth at one point and this is what we got. And however, I wish that was the case. That is not the truth. One million views does not make you a millionaire. And today I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit of a how to get there because I've just seen so many videos of people saying how much they made, but I feel like that's boring and no one really wants to know that and dude just tell us how much money you make already no but i really want to focus on like how it got there like the process you know like not how much no one gives a shit about everything else okay okay fine today we're gonna talk about how much money i made in the first part of today's video and then i'll teach you guys how to get there because i realized over my eight years on youtube that there's some things i've learned about the longevity and real strategy to grow a channel so if you guys want to know more how to apply that to yours we're gonna dive right in Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Jade. I'm an 18 year old entrepreneur and I have a few businesses about social media. So welcome to the channel if you're new. On this channel, we talk about social media growth and helping you grow your brand. So if you want to know more, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to join the family. It's a fun little club we have here. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll cut to the chase. You guys want to know how much money I made? Let's just, let's just dive right in. So the most viewed video I have on my channel has 1.6 4 million views. It's about how to grow on YouTube, which is a little bit ironic. Anyways, you guys want to know how much I made? $3,387. So that was a video with almost over 1.6 million views. Let's take a look at another video with 1 million views. Make sure you got a sip or tea. So this video has 1 million views and it's about how to grow on Instagram. And I made, dun 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 dun. $3,508 lifetime. Whew, so I don't think I saw that, but a video with almost 1.7 million views made less than a video with 1 million views. By default, I should be making at least four grand on the 1.7, but in reality, that's not how it works. Basically, when advertisers put ads on your videos, it depends on how much your audience is valued. So if you have a younger audience, they're probably not gonna buy as much stuff. However, if you have an older audience, they might buy an iPhone, right? So Apple will place an ad on that demographic, meaning that market's gonna be more expensive. So because so many more advertisers are gonna target the older demographic, if your videos have an older audience, you're gonna get a larger cut out of that. It's all based on your viewership, not your views. So it can vary from video to video of how much you make. Typically the range I've seen is 500 to $10,000. This is my friend Shelby Church. She has a video that has 3 million views and it literally made $700. So as you can see, there's a lot of inconsistencies on YouTube. Now, bro, are you talking about the time you got demonetized? Say it. Say it. Dude, why? I wasn't going to tell them about that. Why, why'd you bring it up? <sighs> okay, fine. I've actually been demonetized on YouTube. What it means to be demonetized on YouTube is that YouTube says you can't be advertised at all. No one wants to place ads on you. So one of my videos is about how to travel and it has 200,000 views, but I only made zero dollars. Yeah. If you're curious, typically it's because I was cussing. I just say fuck shit bitch all the time and I can't stop just causing a problem. When I first had my channel seven years ago, I used a lot of copyrighted music, so all those videos got demonetized because all the money went to the music label. So those are just two main reasons how you can get demonetized. So really, if you have a million views and get demonetized, you can actually make zero dollars. Yay. Don't be like me. I should fucking stop cussing. Shit. All right, so now what I've been waiting for. How long did it take me to get monetized? I feel like there's so many small channels here. How long will it take you to blow up and become a millionaire? All right, so I'm about to reveal the truth and you're not gonna like this answer. I've seen a lot of people talk about, you know, how much money they made, but no one goes over how long it really took or the amount of work. Some people, it takes five months. For me, it took eight years. I was only monetized in the year of 2018. That's only last year, but I've been on YouTube for a long freaking time. I have over 270 videos total. So you can say that it took me eight years, but really in reality, I just had to consistently put out content and it was a lot of hard work, but I feel like people glamorize the process. So this is where we leave off. What is the biggest thing you guys can focus on that will attribute to growth? If there's a number one focus point, where should you guys put all your energy in to maximize your success? So I narrowed it down to four main attributes. Idea, team, budget, 
and timing. So let's start with idea. Is having a good video idea what's gonna contribute to growth? Honestly, I don't think so. Yes, you have to have quality content, but you don't necessarily have to have the most newest and an innovation idea. For example, my video with a million views was about a tutorial and it's kind of boring as fuck to be honest. It wasn't that creative. On the flip side, I think having creative content is crucial. Like it's it's a, the biggest part. But I don't think it's the most important because we all see those videos with a million views that literally doesn't make sense how they got there. Like memes, weird 30 second TikTok videos, and especially weird videos from the past that are resurfacing to the top. If you've been on YouTube recommendations, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, Jade, so if it's not an idea, maybe it's the team. Maybe you have to have connections with YouTube. You have to have a good editor to make it solid. Now, in the beginning, I thought it was team, right? Ryan Higa, who's a YouTuber here, has a team of five, 10 of his friends that edits and creates films for him. He's able to be interesting online because he has a huge group and it's super entertaining. You know, sometimes making YouTube videos in your room alone or literally in the middle of the fucking street at a supermarket can be kind of lonely. But I think we've seen a lot of YouTubers succeed in their bedroom. Emma Chamberlain blew up to a million subscribers in only three months. And she was just making videos in her car, in her room. So there's really inconsistencies in regards to team. Okay, okay, Jay. Let's just be honest though. The best YouTubers have the budget. Well, I don't actually think so. See, in the beginning, I thought people with the best sets or the ability to buy ads maybe can grow a channel really fast. But I've seen so many channels build their channel off of ads. I'm not gonna name names, but like, there's a quite a few. And I've done a lot of marketing for brands especially, and a lot of people buy their way to success. They have budget, but they're still not able to create a community online. So you really can't shortcut your way with money. So a budget doesn't really have relevance. But the one that I found has the biggest consistencies in regards to success is timing. Timing is all about having the right message at the right time. It's not necessarily making a long video, it's about being in the game for long enough. I actually took data from the top five YouTubers and try to see if there's similarities between them. Putting them all in a graph, we have Nika Higa, Shane Dawson, Jake Paul, Michelle Phan, and Emma Chamberlain. Now all these videos definitely have quality ideas, they definitely have great content, but their team varies. Nika Higa and Jake Paul have huge teams, they have editors and filmmakers for him to make content. However, Emma Chamberlain does definitely did not have a team. She just edited it in her room. So then it leaves us with budget. A lot of YouTubers actually don't start with much in their very, very beginning. Ryan Higa started in his room on his own laptop. So this leaves us with timing. How did these YouTubers arrive at a such good time with the right message? Well, Michelle Fon. She was the first YouTuber to make YouTube make it tutorials that were not full production. She arrived at a time when the market needed maybe amateur videos that are relatable versus huge production sets. So she arrived at a time because she was the first, it was the good timing. There's a book called The 22 Laws of Marketing and there's a law that mentions that if you can't be first in a category, set up a new category so you can be the first in. When you're the first in the mind, when you're early to the game, you're gonna attract the most viewerships. And honestly, that's why I think timing is so important. For me personally, if you guys are curious, I was on YouTube for like a long time and I actually started with makeup tutorials and fashion and I was just chasing a trend that was already built out. I became unheard and it was very saturated. So when I switched over to marketing, I realized there was not a lot of people here. I was like, what the fuck? I'm alone. And it was scary to be alone, but that was really what attributed to what I think is my success on this channel, is being the first in a category is scary, but it's crucial to arrive at that first time. So to recap, what this means is it's not necessarily about having the best quality, the best everything. It's all about timing. And my number one tip, you guys, for success is just to stay long enough in the game. Do whatever it takes to increase your runway. What does that mean? All it means to be in the game is just to show up. And I'm actually gonna make a part two video, I'll link it below, of how to increase your longevity on YouTube and Instagram. If you're a creator, how do you make sure you're consistent and you don't burn out? Because at the end of the day, I found out throughout my years, I took breaks here and there. It wasn't a consistent eight years, a solid grind. Like sometimes I have to pivot, change ideas. You know, you really evaluate and analyze the right things to focus on. So with that being said, I will link part two in the description box so you guys can check it out. But in the meantime, just remember the most important thing. You can't control your results, but you can control the preparation you have before then. Focus on being consistent, focusing on uploading and doing what you can control, which is your behavior. You can't control what the market's gonna respond to, how much money you have, where your parents grew up in, but you can control how hard you work. So that's why I believe that this is the number one key to success to reaching a million views or reaching your goal. I actually had a conversation on my podcast with the CEO of Final Straw. Her name's Emma and she grew her company to over like five million in a year. And I was asking her like, when people see that quick success, you know, what do you say? Because it looked like it happened overnight. And 
Emma tells me, Jade, I didn't build a $5 million company overnight. Before we launched, I was working on researching the product, building it with my team. There was endless counts of years where no one saw the work I put in and only want to snapshot that quick growth. And there's going to be so many news articles that are going to glamorize success. Say it only took a few months, a few videos. But that's not the case because all the news and headlines are trying to do is just trying to get our attention with those numbers. In reality, that's not the case, okay? Like, trust me, I have, I know people who work at Forbes and who work at like all these entrepreneur sites and all the headlines are fake. Like, they're really exaggerated. So as a consumer, we're really enticed, but it's not the reality. So I hope this doesn't make you feel insecure about your growth. Be consistent, guys, do not give up. It took me a long time to realize this but I wanna let you know you're not alone. And on this channel, I just wanna hopefully empower you to keep going in your journey. I love you so freaking much, okay? Like, I, I'm so passionate about this because I fucking hate it. Oh shit, I gotta really stop cussing. I freaking hate it when I see people online trying to make their audience feel like shit when it's not the truth. So yeah, don't feel discouraged, guys. I'm really proud of your guys' success and, and keep going. And I'm really proud of you guys. I love you guys so much. And shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, just comment below. I will link below my podcast, you guys. It's on iTunes. And hey, it would be crazy if we can get our podcast to the top 100 business podcasts in the world. There was one point where we had at that one point, but I stopped uploading. So now we're kind of trailing back the charts. So if you want to support the podcast, go click the link below. It's free. You guys can connect with me even more on Instagram and subscribe if you're new here. I love you guys so much. Check out part two for more and I'll see you very soon. All right, catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.